grade one listed building and it also has a very important claim to fame it's the oldest and the most complete georgian playhouse in britain and that's a fact okay all the good stuff is on the inside so without further ado let's go in and view the piece de resistance in the early 1700s there weren't any theatres in britain as it was illegal to act for money however plays were performed by traveling companies of actors who found ways around the law from the 1760s, royal patents were granted to a few leading provincial theatres. But the biggest change came in 1788 with the passing of the Theatre Licensing Act, which allowed companies of actors the right to apply for licences to put on classical plays for 60 days at any one time. And it was shortly after the Theatre Licensing Act that a remarkable Yorkshireman called Samuel Butler signed a 21-year lease with the Richmond Corporation. And on the 2nd of September in 1788, this remarkable, unique little theatre was open to the public. And isn't it just marvellous? It really is. It is so tiny though, but it's just fabulous. When it first opened, this venue was simply named the Theatre. And Butler's company of actors played not only here, but at seven other theatres that the entrepreneurial Butler had established across Yorkshire. Sadly, in 1830, the lease on this building was never renewed. The theatre and the Butler Company parted ways. Over the following centuries, a few odd performances were played out on this very stage. But in general, the theatre was put to different uses. It became a wine vault. During the Second World War, it was a storage depot. And believe it or not, it was even an auction room. <laughs> but thankfully, the core, the fabric of this very building was never altered greatly. That's why it's become so important to theatre historians from all over the world, because it's the best surviving example of a Georgian playhouse in Britain. And it's an absolute architectural delight. The dilapidated theatre has been firstly restored in the 1950s and then again in 2003. On both occasions, restoration was undertaken carefully and sympathetically so that the theatre appears much the same as it would have been when the Butler Company were performing all those years ago. It's actually known as the Courtyard Theatre because it mimics the sort of space you would find behind a public house, which is where the touring troops of actors would have played before theatres were even built. And in fact, this theme carries on to the ceiling above. If you look up there, you can see these fluffy white clouds sort of blowing along in the breeze, mimicking the open air space that the plays were watched in. The stage itself is typical of the period and is known as a proscenium arch, which acts as a window to the action. The stage is raked and it's a foot higher at the back than at the front in order to give the audience a better view. Today, the Georgian Theatre Royal can seat up to 214 people, but back in the Georgian era, 400 eager audience members would have squeezed in. You can imagine how lots more people were jammed in this small space altogether. But which were the good seats and which were the bad? Well, up here is called the gallery and these are the cheap seats used by the young and the dissolute. To watch a performance here back in the Georgian period would have cost you one shilling. Did you hear that? Well, don't worry, that was me. This gallery has a unique Georgian feature. It's known as the kicking board, and that's exactly what you do to it. The Georgian patrons would have used this to show signs of disapproval if the act wasn't working out properly. And of course, I've been told it's still used today, but only as a sign of approval to encourage an encore. Yeah, more please, more. I say, who's that talented chap down there? This whole area is known as the pit. It's more expensive than the gallery. Theatre goers would pay two shillings to watch a performance here when the Butler Company was in town. I would have preferred to have sat here though in one of these seats. They're considered to be the best in the house. To sit in one of these boxes would have cost you three shillings per person. In fact, this is the royal box. It's the best seat in the house. Why? Because it has a direct eye line with the actors on stage right in front of you. And up here is another example of a typical Georgian feature. This is called the Juliet box. Now, it's not for the audience to sit in and watch the plays. It's for the actors to use for balcony scenes. And of course, it's named after the most famous heroine of all, Juliet, from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. 
Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Here I am. So that's how the Georgians would have watched theatre. But I'm interested in seeing what went on behind the scenes. I'm going to tread in the actor's footsteps as I head down underneath through the dressing room to the very guts of the theatre. I'm underneath the stage right now. There it is, look, there above me. Now, this whole area is known as the machine room. And these are the footlights, or the floats as they were called, back in the Georgian period. Now, these candles would have been alight in troughs of water. And this whole trough would have been winched up by this winch here, going up to the stage to project light back onto the actors' faces so you could see them. And of course, they were in water because if the candles fell over, well, it would put the flame out, wouldn't it? And the whole place then wouldn't catch on fire. Perhaps one of the most exciting parts of the theatre is operated from right down here, and that's the trap doors. Now, this enables items and actors to spring up out of nowhere onto the stage. There were originally three trap doors here, but now there's only one, and this is a reconstruction. And sadly, <laughs> it doesn't work either, so I've got to take the long way back up. The Georgian Theatre Royal holds such a prestigious place in the history of theatre in Britain that many of our country's finest actors feel it's a status symbol to have played here. Timothy West, Judi Dench and plenty of other legendary actors have graced the stage here. And I have to say, yours truly is very proud to have been able to visit this fascinating piece of theatre history.